A mechanic is a device used to control the direction of plant material um, in a design. And that's the definition from the handbook. And it's basically anything to hold the plant material and the plants in place. Um, it can be natural, it can be man-made. We're gonna see quite a few of them. The most common one we have are the pin holders. Um, in Japanese, Ikebana, they call it Kenzan, which means sword mountain. There are a bunch of little pins, uh, either brass, iron, lead, lots of different things used as pin holders. This is an example of some of the different shapes, sizes. Um, you can see these are just basically pin holders that you put in another container, a vase, et cetera. You can see the different colors. Um, the ones that are really cheap, you can take a can of spray paint and spray paint them any color, though down the road, the paint does chip off. If we go to the next ones, we see what's next slide, we see what's called cup holders, which is basically pin holders in some sort of either lead or metal or brass cup. Uh, as you can tell, the one on the left has pink around it because I was using a design where I actually didn't want to put the cup holder in a vase, but I didn't want it to be noticeable, so it ended up being pink. Again, spray paint outside, uh, design master dries very quickly. Uh, this shows another view of, of the side height. Most of them are about one and a half inches high. They do either have straight edges or curved edges, depending on uh, if you're gonna use branches that you want something leaning at an angle, but supported, you might wanna go with one of the curved edge container pin holders or cup pin holders. Or you can make your own cup holder. This is a tuna fish can and the plastic can from I don't know what, uh, but you can drop a pin holder in those. And you don't have anything else. If you're using pin holders in a container, you may want to secure them, and I'm going to be demonstrating that at the end, but you use floral clay. It's the sticky stuff that gets all over your hands and get everywhere, and if you get it on your clothes, you start swearing. Uh, it <laughs> dries out, so if you buy it, put it in a, a plastic bag, seal it tight so it doesn't dry out. If you get it on something that you don't like, Vegetable oil, olive oil works great. It just kind of turns it into this liquidy stuff that you can wipe off with a sponge or a paper towel. But I'll show you how to use that in a bit. Um, there are specialty type of pin holders out there on the market. Uh, what you see right here is a pin holder that actually goes upside down in another pin holder, but that uh, point in the middle actually can be screwed in or poked into another branch. So you're actually using a pin holder inside of another pin holder. Mm -hmm. Once you start looking at the pin holders on the market, either in an antique shop, Goodwill, um, Salvation Army, garage sales, you can find that there are a lot of them out there. A lot of them are being passed around by garden club members as they retire from doing designs. If somebody offers you a bunch of them, take it. Uh, this is a specific one that I got from Japan that actually is used to hold branches. Uh, and as you can see, there are, there's a little brass uh, baffle that goes in that you can use to hold the, bra uh, the branch in place. Again, just a specialty type of pin holder. Uh, these are other ones that can hold branches. And the whole point is you have to make a hole or you have to screw inside or drill inside the branch before you put it uh, on this uh, wedge or peg, whatever you want to call it. But they do hold a lot better. Do realize that, and we'll show how to put a branch into a pin holder, it still may end up being wobbly. Here's another pin holders that actually join together. Uh, if you want a larger one, but you have a different shape uh, vessel, you can do that, as you can see, that they're kind of notched out, so one fills into the next. These are cages. Gene and I have talked about these. They come in different sizes. They're stainless steel, so they don't rust. Uh, as you can see, they're almost like a spring-loaded uh, type. You can compress them. They go out farther. 
When you put that branch in there, it holds that branch into place. You do need a taller vessel or a more secure vessel to do this. I've not had good luck putting it in a flat container as we'll see, even with the floral clay to hold it in place. This is just a little snake one that has lots of little teeny tiny. And if you're using for a petite design and you wanna use uh, either a teeny tiny small one, these do pop out, uh, two or three of these. Um, you can see there's only like five, six, seven, eight prongs to it compared to the usual 30 or 40. You can make your own. Um, that's the other thing. If you find at the very end that you're saying, oh, I really, really need something, um, get yourself a good strong piece of wood. Don't use plywood, but use a heavier wood as much as it's painful. Something like walnut cherry mahogany is dense. Uh, you can paint it any color, and I know that's uh, hard for me to say because I don't like to paint walnut cherry or mahogany, but if you use four nails to the bottom of it, you've created your own pin holder. Uh, the other one to the side is called a uh, hairpin pin holder, and it looks somewhat similar, and again, it's for bigger branches or bigger stems to hold in place. You get a pin holder, you put something in it, the pins bend. So when they pin, you need to straighten. When they bend, you need to straighten them up. This is a pin hold straightener. It just has a little teeny tiny thing. You put it down on the pin, move it, straighten it up. When you insert branches, and we're going to run through a bunch of these and, and then show you so Trace can run through these fast. Basically, it's there to make sure that we're securing the branches all the way. Uh, one of the things you may want to do with a heavy branch like bamboo, and we can use bamboo in Illinois, but I know it is in some states uh, invasive species, but any woody branch, if you just try to jab it into a pin holder, it may not work. And what we're going to demonstrate is the idea of the end that you're going to jab in, you should cut so it's either into quarters or six or eights, but you're making smaller pieces, but not cutting all the way through, just so it will stand up and adhere into the pin holder. Um, this is an example of it sticking in there. And you can see how now that after I cut it four times, it has splayed and that is actually holding it up. And if I had that in front of me, I could actually hold the branch up and it would pull the pin holder at the same time. So it makes them very secure, but again, it's that cut that we're gonna demonstrate. Uh, with something like palms, you may have to make lots of cuts. I'm sorry, my basement is messy, but you can see all of the, of the slices that I've made through with my Felco pruners in order to create not one great big thing that I'm trying to jab, but lots of smaller ones that can jab in easier. There, a lot of times people will call pin holders frogs. As we'll see in the next slide, these are actually what frogs are. Frogs are the glass things that, I guess some, at sometimes people put them on the top of a vase and poke stems through it. And so your stems were all over the place. These technically are frogs. Uh, one I stuck into a tin can. I haven't found a very good use for them anymore at flower shows. They just don't seem to do anything except make a bouquet and we don't uh, exhibit bouquets, we exhibit designs. Uh, these are also frogs. Uh, these are made from red. They're very common in Ikebana. Um, I even went as far as putting one that looks like a turtle and one that looks like a crab. Uh, again, they're used in vases. In some cases, the usabatas, the containers, are used to hold them. Okay, now we get to the florist foam. And if we get to the next slide, we'll find the most common type on the market of the florist foam, and that is Oasis. And these show some of the colors of Oasis. And what's important to see right here are the top holes. You see all of those little holes there in the green block of Oasis. When you are soaking those, those holes need to be pointed up, not down, but pointed up. That way you fill the block of oasis and you get no air because you really don't want air in the block of oasis. It all those holes also form a great grid if you have to cut the block of oasis to a certain size, if you want to make it a circular triangle or whatever, those grids really kind of help. This is soaking the oasis in water. 
again, the points, the holes are going up. When you soak it, the oasis should be soaked in warm water. You shouldn't be using a lot of hot water. There are some quick soak oasis bricks on the market. I personally don't think that they last as long or as, or as strong as the regular ones, but it only takes about oh, half an hour to an hour to thoroughly soak a block of oasis. You can cut it to fit any container. A rule of thumb, if you are gonna put it in a container, make sure it's not flat with the top of the container, but give yourself an inch or two above the container, especially if you're gonna make a mass arrangement. This allows you to get some of your plant material going horizontal, which Gina will talk about. If you're gonna put it in a container, it's best to adhere it to the container using Oasis tape. Oasis comes in a lots of different types, lots of different shapes. We tend to think of the brick, but there are huge bricks that are maybe three or four, I should say four or six or eight bricks uh, big that you can use for great big faces and mass arrangements. Uh, one of the things that I love are the Oasis stick-ons that you see down at the bottom. You wet them upside down in a little saucer or a small bowl of water. Try not to get the white part on the bottom wet. Then you peel that off, you stick it on something, and you have a little bit of oasis to put your flowers in and to hold the moisture. Uh, the one in the cage in the upper right is good to attach to metal structures. Uh, you just soak the whole thing. And then you can see the little hooks on the side of it. You can wire that into the metal container. When you are using Oasis, some of these do's, make sure it's in warm water. Think about it for beforehand. Uh, secure it tightly, cut it with a strong knife or wire, and I'm gonna demonstrate that. As well as some of the don'ts on the next slide. And basically on the don'ts, don't reuse it. Use as soon as possible. Uh, I have let, some dry out and re-wet and stuck flowers in it and it crumbles. So make sure at that point, throw it away. And again, you use it as wet and we're gonna talk a little bit and show an example of that. Agra wool is a new product that costs maybe three to five times as much as Oasis. In my opinion, doesn't work as well as Oasis for what Oasis is, but for what it, you may use it for, it may be great. It's not organic, it's natural. It's basalt, it's a volcanic rock mixed with sucrose, which is a sugar to bind it. If you look at the lower one, you can see little um, lines that go straight across. It's created in layer. It almost feels like insulation. It feels like um, shredded, uh, a really rough sweater, it can cause itching, it can cause rashes, so you have to be careful with it. You wet it the same way, you keep it moist. Um, it's almost imperative with it that I have found that you pre-make your holes, and I use a chopstick, and you can see the before and the after with it. Um, you wanna keep those striations horizontal, so you wanna poke into the top. Uh, with any oasis or agri wool, it's important that you make sure that you have a stem that is cut at an angle so it does go in easily to the material. Uh, hopefully, Mary will talk more about agri wool at the end. It's a new thing on the market. Um, you can Google it. You can go on Amazon and buy it. Uh, Mary may have another location to it. Adherence. Okay, so you have all of these things, but maybe you need some other ways to get plant material into your design. We have glue dots, dashes. These are things that any uh, designer's toolbox should have all of these. The dashes, and then there are some new types of dashes like the strips are wonderful because they will hold a plant in place, a leaf in place. If a flower breaks, you can kind of manipulate using it. Floral adhesive, another product from the Oasis company. I'm not trying to promote Oasis, it's just out there. Uh, this adhesive is good for putting stems on stems, flowers on flowers. It's almost like a combination of super glue, 
uh, a glue gun, Elmer's glue. Um, it's, it's a good one for fixing a broken pedal or if a rose or a chrysanthemum has lost a pedal and you got a great big gap for your design, you can use this. All sorts of different tapes, two-sided, one-sided. Florist tape comes in a lot of different colors. I had some stems that I was gonna use today that I actually wrapped and I pulled them out and I realized that they were wrapped. A lot of times I may take a hollow stem like we'll show in an allium or in a, a papyrus and I will actually put another stem attached to either side, wrap that with this floral tape and that actually secures it a little bit better in the uh, pin holder. Ties, you can see that we have all sorts of different types of ties with fishing line, eight pound, it should be the minimum. You can go up to 30 or 40. It gets a little bit thicker, gets a little bit harder to work, but on some things, this is great uh, to tie things in place. Now you can't, in my opinion, can't live without Velcro. Uh, the sticky type that's on both sides are great. Um, these are zip ties, uh, bread ties, pipe cleaners. All of them work wonders. Zip ties come in all sorts of different colors and sizes. Going on to the next slide, uh, you can see that we have all different types of binding wire. Uh, wire comes in lots of different sizes and the number of the long wire refers to how many of those wires make an inch. So the smaller the number, the thicker the wire. Wire is also good for cutting a block of oasis when needed uh, if you don't happen to have a bread knife with you. Uh, I use bamboo skewers all over the place. I use chopsticks. When my mother passed away, we found probably 2,000 pairs of chopsticks that she had never used from the Chinese restaurants. Um, as you can see on the left slide, I took a whole bunch of sticks, wired them, taped them together, and I've actually created my own form where now I can stick things in between those, almost like an armature form of myself, but it's not really a grid but it is another structure that I created to hold branches and create more of an angular effect. Um, you can get florist sticks with um, orchid tubes at the top. This is one way to extend the height of a plant, of a flower. Remember, it's not gonna be that secure. You still have a wood stick, so if you stick something big up in the top, chances are it's still gonna fall over. This is an example of taking a wooden stick taking that florist uh, tube and then wrapping that florist tape around it, sort of a natural green color and making it not really going to appear in the design. Finally, uh, don't forget rocks, sand, glass marbles. You look at these marbles in this vase, you stick a flower or a branch in there, those marbles are going to go around it and basically hold it in place. I've taken some very tall cylinders filled them with the glass marbles or these black rocks or even sand. It adds weight if you have something really tall so your vase doesn't tip over, but it also provides good support. And with that, Tricia, I think we go back to the demonstrations. Okay, hello people, this is my demonstration. First of all, I was gonna show you how to attach the pin holder. Pin holder, I got a vase. If I put it directly into the vase, as long as everything is centered, that's fine, but it can wobble and it can move. So what I have all over the place, because it really is sticky, is this floral tape. It's very sticky, or I should say floral clay. You pull it, it comes off in strips like that. You take it, you put it on the bottom of your pin holder, press it down on the pin holder, put it in your container, and when you're putting it in your container, press down and twist. It's important that you twist because that provides a better seal. Now, the pin holder doesn't fall down, and hopefully I can hold the container up with the pin holder. But it's important that you make sure that you twist it as you are securing. Before I go on to the next step, I wanted to show you again, if you're gonna put something in, it's just important that if I try to do this, 
it's not going in very hard and I have to push hard and it tends to go between the pins and not on the pins. So I make a, just a quick thin cut. And when I do that, I can put it in and then I actually can bend it a little bit and it's being held by the pins. So it's a good way. And then again, I can tilt it. Uh, I'm gonna take another one. And when you use a pin holder, if you know the branch is gonna be angled, you should cut your stem at the same angle. So it goes down in and holds in place. It looks terrible, but that's how you use it. One last thing I'm gonna talk about is using the Oasis and how to adhere it. One of the things I do a lot is that I'll have a big heavy branch and then I want more of a mass design around it. Or if I'm making a huge mass design and I know there's gonna be tall things, I may want all that support from the pin holder. So what's in the middle doesn't switch, falls away, falls all over the place, moves from side to side in the oasis. So what I'm gonna do is I have my pin holder in there. I am taking some cheesecloth. Now you can use tool, you can use netting, but I'm putting the cheesecloth in the pin holder as such. And it looks like that. There's a reason. If I don't do that and I put the block to Oasis straight down on that pin holder, when I pull the Oasis up, I have Oasis all over left in the pin holder. But I can grab the edge of the cheesecloth, pull it up, and it pulls up 99% of the Oasis that was left in the pin holder. I look at my Oasis, it's soaked. You can see the holes there. It could fit in the vase, but I want it a little bit differently. So I'm using my bread knife and an old bread knife would be better. I'm pushing this down hard. Now it's secured to the pin holder now, but if I didn't have the pin holder there, what I would want to do is I would want to use this Oasis tape. It's green, basically the same color of Oasis. I had pieces pre-cut. You need to make sure your container is dry. This tape will not stick on wet containers. You decide where you want to put it. For the moment, I'm just going to put it across the top. Uh, pardon me, one second. My scissors went out of my way. I'm going to cut the tape. And what you shouldn't do is just use one piece. You should use two pieces. So I'm putting the second piece over the top, pulling it down just a little bit. So it's biting into the oasis. And there I've created my grid. Now, if I know I'm gonna have something in the middle, I may create my grid down here. I may use several pieces. But at the moment, my oasis is secure in my vase. It's not gonna come out. That's water, thank heavens, I got a towel there. And I think my time is up there, Trish. So that's my demonstration. I will turn it back to you.